today I'm going to show you my new and improved vanilla cupcake recipe that stays moist for even longer with some slight adjustments to the ingredients but you get that same great tasting cupcake. Welcome to another episode of The Scrand Line. I'm Nick and today I'm going to show you how to make my incredible cupcakes which you can use for all of my other recipes that have come before it but this cupcake is just going to be even more moist and just as delicious. Let's begin by adding some cake flour, baking powder and salt to a large sieve. We're going to sift that into a bowl and mix it until well combined using a whisk. To a separate bowl we're going to be adding some softened butter. Now just a little bit of info about the softened butter. You want to make sure it's soft enough that when you press into it with your finger there's a little bit of resistance but you can make an indent. Add that to a bowl along with some caster sugar and vanilla bean paste and mix that for about 3 minutes until everything is creamed together. If you want even more in-depth info into this recipe that's going to give you the best results every time, I've written up a whole bunch of stuff on my website about this recipe that answers all of your questions that you guys have had throughout the years about this recipe. Then you're going to add 2 eggs, one at a time, mixing each time until it's well combined. Now guys, let's do a little pause here because you've noticed if you're a cake maker that I've just used the creamy method. Previously, I was a big fan of the reverse creamy method. The difference between the two is that with the reverse creamy method, you're adding the butter into the dry ingredients and mixing it until it reaches a sand-like texture. This method results in a slightly denser cupcake, but it's a really quick method of making cupcake butter. The creamy method takes a little bit longer, but you're left with a fluffier cupcake that still gives you the same great tasting results. A lot of people have asked me throughout the years the difference between these two, so I wanted to kind of pause and explain that. I've included both methods in this recipe, so you can choose which one you want to do. Let's continue with this recipe. Next we're going to add some Greek yogurt and vegetable oil and whisk that in. We're going to add half the milk, which is at room temperature. Give it a mix before you add all of the dry ingredients and remaining milk and mix until everything is well combined and there are no dry ingredients showing. It's really important that you make sure that you scrape down the bowl each time you add a new ingredient to make sure everything mixes really well. Here's an example of what happens when you don't mix all of the dry ingredients well. You can end up with kind of a bit of an explosion in the oven because here I'm guessing the raising agents did not mix well into the batter so I got really inconsistent results on the same baking tray. Line your cupcake tray with cupcake liners. If you want to know the measurements of both of these things, they're in the article on my website, thescranline.com. I'm going to use an ice cream scoop to scoop my batter into my cupcake liners, filling them up about three quarters of the way. You're going to bake these on 120 degrees Celsius for 40 minutes. Now, this is a really low temperature and a really long baking time. And I do this for two reasons. Because I get nice flat cupcakes, which makes them way easier to frost. And I get cupcakes that don't brown, which means that if you're going to add any food gel coloring to these cupcakes, you're going to get nice bright vivid colors. Let's go a little more in depth on the oven temperature. You can see three different cupcakes here. They all look completely different, but it's basically the same batter. In the first one, which let's call the terrible cupcake, the temperature was way too high. It was 170 degrees Celsius, which means that the top of the cupcakes cracked. Still tasted the same, but visually doesn't look great. Generally, I think we can do better than that. Batch two was a slightly better result. I made sure that I mixed the butter better this time. The temperature was lower to 150 degrees Celsius. These baked crooked because of the high temperature and they cracked still, but they're really nice and fluffy on the inside. So we're on the right track. Batch three came out absolutely perfect. And this is my tried and true method of baking cupcakes low temperature, longer baking time. To frost these cupcakes, I'm going to be using my delicious American buttercream frosting. Recipe for that is on my website as well. 
I'm using an open star tip or a 1M tip works great with these as well to frost a swirl on top of each cupcake. And guys, the great thing about these cupcakes is you can make them ahead of time because they stay moist for about three or four days. This is a really versatile recipe. You can add flavorings, colorings. You can do all sorts of cool designs with them. If you want to learn more about how to do that to this recipe, head over to my website, thescramline.com. I've written up a whole bunch of information and answered your questions, and the written recipe is there, ready for you guys to print out as well. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this recipe, and I'll see you all on the next episode of The Scramline.